Hi, everybody. Hello, hello. How is everyone doing today? I am good. The weekend is good. Uh, the weather was actually super warm the last couple of days, but the wind here is awful. So I've been trying to enjoy the weather the best we can, but it's like 40 mile per hour winds. That's just awful. Hello, Jaden. How are you? I am going to just share this post, this video on my Facebook and on some of the groups that I'm a part of, cooking groups and things like that, and then we will get started. So today is a special and unique day. Today I am cooking for the Minot Men's Winter Refuge. Um, I think I'm saying that right. I hope the words are all in the right order, um, but... I signed up as a part of the meal train to cook for these guys. Um, they say on average they have to 10 to 15 guys out there. Um, so we're going to be cooking for 15 people. And when I think about cooking for 15 grown men, I think about a lot of food. So we're going to be making our Philly cheesesteak sliders and my mac and cheese, which I've done my mac and cheese on here before, but I mean, it couldn't hurt to do it again. So we'll do mac and cheese and we'll do these Philly cheesesteak sliders and just keep in mind, I'm not going to repeat myself a lot, but just keep in mind, I am cooking for 15 people. So I am going to be multiplying my recipes by four and sometimes five. So um, when you think about the portion sizes, just keep that in mind. Hello, Caitlin, how are you? I am just sharing these really quick to these cooking groups that I'm a part of, and then we will get started. If you live in the Minot area or outside of the Minot area and you guys want to um, help this wonderful cause, um, it's the one of the very few men's um, shelters in Minot or in North Dakota. Um, they only help through the winter months. That's why it's called Winter Refuge um, because our winter months are so brutal. They are here to help people that um, need a little bit of extra help in the winter time. Hello, Sean and Alice, Tammy, Bridget, Lynn, Tracy, how is everyone doing? So I'm just sharing these to some cooking pages and then we will get started. Like I said, we're doing our Philly cheesesteak sliders and then we are doing um, my mac and cheese, which I said I've done my mac and cheese on my show before. It was a while back, so we're just gonna do a refresher for some of the new watchers. Good afternoon, Kimberly and Kathy. All right, I think I have those shared to some groups. All right. So, like I said, just keep in mind, you guys, I'm cooking for 15 people, 15 bodies. So, when I am, the, the recipe that I have posted in the description is for four servings. So, if you don't have to do any kind of conversion or anything to the recipe that I provided, but when I'm talking today and I'm going to be cutting up six peppers and three onions and things like that, that's not going to be the portion sizes you guys are going to be working with. Yes, you guys, it is an awesome program. So if you guys feel inclined at all to help this program out as well, I have put the link in the description and you guys can donate um, grocery cards, restaurant gift cards, blue apron cooking gift cards, and you can sign up for the meal train if you're in the area. So they've got a couple of slots open in the next two months. I think they're only, they only um, house these guys until April or only provide meals until April. So we just, they opened up the rest of the calendar to the meal train, which is super awesome because I went to sign up um, for December and January and it was completely booked, which is super awesome for them. So they opened up the rest of the month. So you guys, let's fill up those, that calendar of the meal train if you're in the area of Minot, North Dakota. Yes, Pam, our winters are brutal. Our winters are definitely hard. <clears throat> I, yeah, I could not imagine. That's why um, you see a lot of the times in the summer, we get some people that, um, that come through on foot, uh, but they're always gone by the time the winter hits. So it is not good to be stuck here without housing or anything like that in the winter time. You guys notice I do have my hair pinned back again. I'm going to try my hardest and most diligent to wash my hands more and make sure that I keep this as sanitary as possible. This is gonna be a first for me. I do cook for other people and bake for other people, but um, this is definitely to a degree that I have not done before. So I think I am going to actually pin my hair all the way back because I think I will be 
messing with it too much if I don't do that. Hello, Betty and Molly. All right, you guys, we are going to be cooking for the Minot Men's Winter Refuge today. I'm trying to find a clip of some kind to get this hair pulled back. All right. Philly cheesesteak sliders, you guys, and mac and cheese. I mean, it can't get any better than that. I was just thinking, what can I make that's going to be, like, super filling and warm and awesome? And this is what came to mind that would be super easy to make. Sorry, you guys. I should have done this beforehand, but I didn't think it was going to drive me this crazy. So, that's not going to work. We all find something to get this hair out of the way. There we go. There. Trusty hair tie. We got it now. Okay, so what should we start with first? Should we do our Phillies first or should we do our mac and cheese first? Um, all right, you guys. Let's do our Philly cheesesteaks first since we're kind of over in this area anyway. So because I'm cooking for 15 guys, instead of just using a regular skillet on my stove, um, I'm just going to use my electric skillet because it's big enough to hold all of these onions and peppers and things like that. So we will get our Philly started. I wonder if my cord is long enough on my electric skillet to reach my outlet. Oops, wrong one. Turn the light out on you guys. All right, I tried to get as prepared as possible, but I wasn't sure if I could even really prepare for this. So, one thing I need in my life is a new skillet. Can you guys tell? <laughs> I ruined my skillet like the first week I had it. Um, it's like a non-stick skillet and you're not supposed to pour soap and water in it while it's scalding hot and I did and it ruined the non-stick around the burner so yeah okay so we are gonna get started so the recipe for these Philly cheesesteaks it's really up to you it's really up to you on what kind of meat you want to use in your Philly I made these for my husband and I a couple of weeks ago and it calls for um, three-fourths of a pound of ribeye thinly sliced. So I did half um, with thinly sliced ribeye for my husband, cooked kind of medium so that it wasn't overdone. And then the, the other half of them, I used this. And these, and I know they sell them at grocery stores too, little packs of this meat. It's to die for. It looks really weird and sounds super simple that it might not taste the best, but it does. And so I know they sell these at grocery stores too. I've used them when I went to Arizona with my mom. And how awesome for me to be able to just pull these packs out of this box, you guys. Um, just little packs of Philly cheesesteak meat. You don't have to thaw it out. You just cook it from frozen. You just put it in a skillet on medium high heat. Um for a minute on one side and then you flip it over for a minute on the other side and it breaks apart in those two minutes and then you just cook it for another four to five minutes however done you want it to be so super awesome I highly recommend them um, because when I used the ribeye on the other half my husband loved it and he said the meat was really good but I didn't chop up the meat enough so he was like biting into a ribeye steak in his sandwich so it was kind of hard for him to eat it like a sandwich without a knife and stuff like that yes exactly Tammy there are a couple of different brands Schwann's is just my choice because who doesn't love the Schwann's man just showing up on your doorstep with your groceries it could not get any better than that so I recommend the Schwann's brand if you know of any other brands I really haven't heard anything bad about these before Yes, Courtney. See, everybody thinks that they are good. Grocery store, Schwann's man, you name it. You seriously just pull them out of the pack. This is what they look like. And you throw them into a hot skillet. 
Let them cook a minute on each side, and then they break up into this yummy, delicious meat. I don't know how many I'm gonna need, because I'm making five of this, this recipe. So the recipe I put up is just for a regular amount of Philly cheesesteak, which is this. This is the bread you're gonna be using. This is one serve, or one of the recipe is what it makes. So that would feed, that fed me and my husband and my two boys and fed us just fine. So I'm actually multiplying this by five for these guys at the Minot Min Winter Refuge. If you did the ribeye steak, could you cut them into strips? Yes, Alice, I recommend, highly recommend that you cut it up as small as possible. And I will show you with this meat what I need because I didn't do that with our ribeye and I left it in ribeye shape, but it was super thinly sliced horizontally, but I didn't slice it any other way and it was just too big too chewy too it was a mess I did it wrong and I know that now so there is a way to do it right and not have to deal with what I dealt with with the first time I tried this recipe but still this meat is so much easier that I don't even know if I would like the ribeye better at this point because of the convenience of this pre-packaged those cheesy meat they also have meat for Rubens, I've seen at the grocery store, and I think some diced chicken of some kind. It just is really easy to put on subs when you are cooking. Yes, you guys, I just recently started shopping Schwann's, and the first time I the Schwann's man came, so I'm just going to flip it over and let it cook for another minute on the other side. Well, the first day the Schwann's man came to my house, I had ordered so much stuff and he came up to my door and like wanted to make sure that I didn't do this on accident because I ordered like 30 different ice cream things and like every chicken product you could think of and yeah he just wanted to make sure that it wasn't a mistake on the computer's end which was funny all right so I'm just going to throw the rest of these in here I am going to pepper a little bit while it is cooking. So just sprinkle some pepper on here. Nothing too crazy. I don't want to get too crazy or too unique with these, you guys. These got they're they're men and they're hungry. And you know men that are hungry aren't picky. So I'm definitely not worried about that. But I am gonna keep it pretty simple so that these guys, um, you know, if they don't like peppers, they can pull the peppers off. If they don't like onions, they can pull the onions off. Things like that. Yes, Lacey, that is when you went through the book three times to make sure we got everything we wanted, everything we needed. Okay, so if you guys can see right here where I'm breaking up, you probably can only see it right there. Let's go this way. See where this is kind of breaking up and shredding up? That's what you want to cut your steak up like once you, if you get the ribeye itself, you want it to kind of break apart into small little strips so that it's nice and shredded and juicy in your sandwich. And what I like about this meat is it's not fully cooked. So if you like your steak to be a little more medium, medium rare, you can cook it that way. And you're not sacrificing that just because you are getting frozen pre-packaged Philly cheese steak meat. That's what I do really like about this is its versatility in what kind of stuff you like cooking, if that makes sense. So we are gonna get these all cooked up and then we are just, I'm just gonna set them off to the side. Um, I didn't, I normally don't strain out any of the juices or any of the fats with it. Um, you know, I've only been to Philly once but I had a Philly cheesesteak while I was there and it was nice and juicy and sloppy and I loved every minute of it. So I tried to imitate that as much as possible. A nice Philly cheesesteak with cheese oozing out of the sides which also brings me to this recipe. So they use provolone cheese in this recipe. So I bought some provolone, but I really, really liked when I made these Philly cheese steaks, you guys. I just did um, craft American cheese slices, nice and ooey gooey, not cheese whisks, because I'm not that extreme. But it's, I'm, I think provolone isn't really a true Philly cheese steak. It needs to be, you know, that yellow cheese. So I use the American Philly cheese steak stuff. So. I am going to grab the cheese out of the fridge. We got a provolone. 
We got our Americans. So you're just gonna need cheese, meat, onions, peppers. If you don't like onions or peppers, which I don't, still just the meat and the cheese and the bun is to die for. Yeah, you guys, I am so glad that I thought about using this skillet and not my pan on my stove because that would have been an absolute nightmare trying to fit all of this meat there. So I'm just gonna kind of scoot this stuff over and get these last two meats in here. I'm hoping that this is enough meat for how much bread I have. Fingers crossed, you guys. So, kind of, nope, I had just flipped that one. All right, so I'm gonna turn this up just a little bit. Hi, baby. That's okay. It's because I'm cooking, so he wanted to see what I was cooking. All right, so we just have this meat heated up, you guys. This love, you're the better. better. Teresa, you live in Philly, so you know what I mean. It's okay, buddy. He's going to hang out with me. You can bring your iPad up here and sit. Um, soon, buddy, really soon. Probably when I'm done cooking, okay? All right, so while this is cooking up the rest of the way, we are going to... So I'm going to put my Philly cheesesteak meat in here when it's all done. We are going to get ready. Daisy Joe, they said 15, 10 to 15. So I obviously went on the higher end of the scale. So 15 full grown men is what I'm going to attempt to feed today. So we are making our Philly cheesesteaks and then I'm making my mac and cheese. Um, I have made my mac and cheese on the page before. So if you've seen it before, it is a repeat. Um, if you have it, my mac and cheese is going to be up next. Betty, have fun at the hockey practice or game. Is it a game? It doesn't say. Hockey, enjoy it and watch the replay later. You never know with how much I'm cooking. I might still be on by the time you're done. <laughs> so we are going to do these fillies and then my mac and cheese. And the mac and cheese recipe um, is in the original post I put up. Last night, I um, attached just that PDF print off of my recipe. Thank you, Mary Jo. Thank you. I love my mac and cheese too. So I'm hoping that these guys will like it. It's super yummy, super filling. My go-to with comfort meal. So I am hoping that they like it as well. Because you can't really go wrong with a nice warm bowl of mac and cheese and a nice cheesy Philly. Hopefully none of these guys are lactose intolerant or don't like cheese because this is not the meal for them. But maybe I should do a couple of the Phillies without cheese on it and just maybe more peppers and onions. Who knows? Like they said, they're not picky. So we'll just do our best. Uh, the mac and cheese recipe, uh, it makes quite a bit of mac and cheese and I'm actually multiplying it by four. Um, Heather, it is this super awesome pre-packaged frozen Schwann's Philly cheesesteak meat. Um, they also sell things like it at the grocery store, not Schwann's brand, but similar. Um, and I have tried them before in Arizona with my mom and they are just as good. I actually have done the real recipe and I failed at it. And this meat is actually my go-to when it comes to Philly cheese steaks now. So we've got this going cooking our meat up, getting our peppers cut up. So I chose yellow and red. You can use whatever peppers you want in your Philly. Um, I've done it also with the little baby sweet peppers I've done it with because I didn't have peppers at home and my husband wanted a Philly and he said they were still really good. So it's up to you if you don't like peppers and onions, like I said, I don't like them and it still tasted really good without all that extra stuff on there. Um, with just the meat and cheese and then those Hawaiian rolls, you guys. You cannot go wrong without with the King's Hawaiian rolls. They are the best. King's Hawaiian rolls are so awesome. And what I love is they make these mini sub rolls. So it's like perfect little mini Philly cheesesteak rolls. Um, or you can also just get like the little mini, the slider size of the the of the rolls and make them like that. It's It doesn't even really matter. It just says that you want to put it on just little rolls of some kind so that you can serve them like that. I I didn't realize how much I liked Philly cheesesteaks 
until I went to Philadelphia and I had a Philly cheesesteak without all the peppers and onions and stuff on it. And they didn't discriminate against me. They didn't yell at me for not having the peppers and onions, which was super nice to not have to deal with that because they do get a lot of flack for um, how picky of an eater I am. But uh, they were super nice and they served me up an awesome Philly cheesesteak and we ate it like two hours before we got on the plane to come back home after um, Philadelphia played um, the Vikings and it was an awesome memory and I have loved Philly cheesesteaks ever since. So I'm just going to kind of toss this meat around. I'm going to cook it a little bit more since I am cooking for those guys. I'm not going to leave the meat raw at all. Um, I don't want to get any of that sick. That is not something I need. They seriously are the best. The King's Hawaiian Rolls are the best. Um, and um, Pillsbury makes um, Hawaiian sweet roll crescent rolls that you can bake in your oven. Think about that, baking your own Hawaiian sweet rolls. They were to die for. We had them um, with our Thanksgiving dinner this year. They were so good. So I am just cutting up our onion or our peppers right now, you guys. I just cut the tops off like this around the top. And then you can just pop out the part with the seeds. And then all you have to do from there is I like to get rid of the extra veins that are in here because they do have a more bitter taste to them. So I just trim a little bit of the lighter colored veins out of my peppers. Like so. Yes, you guys, I'm super excited. I hope it is an absolutely delicious meal. I'm supposed to deliver it by 6 o'clock. So I hope I gave myself enough time to get all this stuff done. And then um, today, what I decided, you guys know I normally do giveaways during my show. And we've hit 106 views, which is awesome. I've been paying close attention to it because I decided that whatever amount of people that we hit that stay there... In increments of 20, I will um, donate food cards in that amount instead of doing a giveaway today. So we have hit 100 and we've stayed there for longer than five minutes. So I'm going to donate as of right now $100 in like Blue Apron or other restaurant food cards, whatever they prefer, to this Minot Men's Refuge today. So Get those shares out there, you guys. Invite your people to come and hang out with me. And we will hit awesome goals. And we will donate that money to this um, Minot Men's Winter Refuge. So let's get those shares out there, you guys. Let's get those shares out there so that we can donate lots of money to these guys for these meals over the next couple months. I need to turn this down a little bit. Just scooping my meat out of my skillet right now. We are gonna use the same skillet to cook up our onions and our peppers. So you don't need to wash it, you don't need to wipe it out or clean it. Um, I might soak up some of this Philly cheesesteak juice just so that my onions and peppers don't get super oily and greasy, but just a little bit of it. Get this meat. Yes, Alice, thank you guys for everyone that's being a part of this count right now and watching this show and hanging out with me. It is for an awesome cause for this Minot Men's Winter Refuge, okay? I'm going to wash my hands up again. And grab my towel. Here we go. So we have our meat out. You guys, you don't need to um, keep it warm or anything like that because we are going to put our Philly cheesesteaks back into the oven to heat them all the way through, melt that cheese, and toast those buns. So you don't have to worry about trying to keep the meat warm while you're doing the rest of this, okay? So we are going to have my, my skillet um, simmer right now, nothing too hot. And we are going to dice up our onions really fast. So I just cut off the end of my onion. The recipe just calls for a cup, oh, two cups of onions diced up, which is about one medium onion, it says. So I'm gonna use three medium onions for our recipe because I'm gonna be making so many of these fillies. Thank you, you guys, thank you for sharing. Get the word out when you share my post right in the description box that we are gonna be donating money for all the viewers that come and hang out with me. 
Um, we did hit that 100, but let's get up to 120, you guys, and do another $20 for these guys. Let's get it done. Yeah, I am, Mary Jo. This is a lot of onion for me. So we are going to cut those ends off and take that outer wrapping off. It's just that first layer, you guys, that you peel off. Nothing fancy, nothing special. You just want to get off all of the protected shell off of this onion before we start dicing it up. I'm throwing onion onto my floor. We're gonna see how messy my kitchen gets, you guys, with this, with this food endeavor I've got going on. This onion does not want to, there we go, peel. And then I just quarter my onions and then you guys can guess where my onions are gonna go next because I hate cutting onions. And so whenever it comes time to cut onions, you guys know what I do. I throw it in my food processor because I hate my eyes watering with onions. So we're gonna throw it in the food processor. Uh, Mary Jo, I have no idea. Um, we are not the original owners of this house, so I don't know all the, the countertops and stuff like that. I have no idea. But who knows? I could be cutting through my counter and I have no idea. But I've been doing it for a long time and I've never seen any scratches. So I'm just going to keep doing it. <laughs> oh, you guys, my eyes are watering so bad. So when we were on the show the other day and I was cutting onions, my dad sent me in there. At, they actually make, it's made for cutting onions goggles that can go over glasses and stuff like that. But if you don't have that, thank you, Daisy Joe. You are so sweet. You guys are so nice. Um, I try to give back the best I can. Um, because really I wouldn't be here without you guys and I don't know how else to say thank you but to give to others so that is what I do so I'm just soaking up some of this fat and grease from this meat so that our onions and um, peppers don't get super soggy and gross but what I was saying about onions is if you ever struggle with cutting onions they do say that if you cut it under warm run running water that it keeps all those fumes down and your eyes won't water as bad so it's kind of a precarious situation trying to cut onions while they're all wet but um my eyes get so bad that it would like be worth it freeze them tracy isn't that really hard to cut though all right so i've turned my heat back up and then i'm just gonna throw in just it says a tablespoon and i'm multiplying by four Let's do three tablespoons. I was going to do four, but that sounds like a lot of butter. So we're going to do three tablespoons of butter. I'm going to take my onions, and I'm going to throw them into my food processor. I just quarter them up, and I'm just going to toss them in here like this, and I'm only just going to pulse them like one time to just dice them up a little bit. You guys, if you've ever had Philly cheesesteaks, you guys know that the onions um, are usually pretty substantial in here so I'm going to keep it like that and that should be good to go you guys a couple of big chunks in there couldn't hurt oh, way more than a couple I normally don't put this many onions in at one time I probably should have done them a couple at a time all right there we go now we've got a couple of big hunks, but we should be okay. Got our onions diced up in here. And now, use the same tongs that we did with our meat. Spread this butter around. And then we're just gonna cook these onions for five minutes. It's okay, Le Sheila, to be late. Sheila, my air fryer is go wise so g-o-w-i-s-e u-s-a and i just recently bought that really big one that i posted on my site and it is a 5.8 quart so 5.8 quart is the size of my air fryer oh my eyes you guys Whew. that was bad my eyes are crying so bad 
tried to chop them up without the blade in there, you guys. Wasn't going to get me very far. I've tried every trick there is for not crying. and None have worked so far. Might have to try under the warm water. Sherry, it sounds like you might have to, like me, buy the goggles and wear goggles because I don't know what it is and I don't wear contacts. So it's not like that is a factor at all. But it is so bad. <laughs> Amy, I'm using a skillet. I'm just using my um, my skillet that I make like grilled cheeses in and pancakes in. My eyes are watering so bad. Okay, let those cook for like three more minutes. It's an Oster brand skillet, O-S-T-E-R. Hopefully putting that lid on, my eyes can adjust a little bit. Woo, my nose is running now. Yeah, Kelsey, but then it's frozen when I throw it in the skillet, and I don't want it to be frozen when I throw it in the skillet. Oster, Heather, Oster, O-S-T-E-R. I love and miss you too, JoJo. Just for a couple minutes, I read somewhere it freezes the enzymes that make your eyes water. But honestly, my eyes really didn't water until I threw it in the skillet. Once I threw it in the skillet, that's when my eyes went crazy. All right, you guys, I told you I'm going to be watching my hands like crazy for this. My family doesn't care about my germs, and I'm sure these guys don't care about them either. But I know how I got some sticklers about me washing my hands. Well, Kelsey, I don't know. <laughs> oh, my gosh, my eyes. All right. <clears throat> now I'm going to take my peppers. Scoot you guys back over. Same thing, you guys. I'm just going to try and reduce how much dirty dishes I do because my husband's not here to help me wash them. <laughs> so I'm going to just throw a couple peppers in at a time, and I'm going to dice them up with my food processor a little at a time. And then we will throw them in with the onions. peppers so we're gonna cook these until they begin to caramelize and then we're gonna add our peppers in and season them with salt and cook them for another three to five minutes how does that sound so we've got our onions going Woo. thank you Jojo Yeah, I've never seen somebody wear them. They looked so dorky when my dad sent me a picture of them. All right, so we've got our peppers in here. Just kind of toss them around. My skillet, I'm keeping at only about 275, it says. So not too hot. I don't want to burn them. I think another... So you don't need to add any more... 
Don't need to add any more butter while you are um, sauteing your onions. Add a little bit of salt, it says, and let them caramelize. So that is what we are going to do. Uh, da, da, da. I've got like onions all over the floor. All right, let's see what I missed. Thank you, my overalls. I appreciate it. Breathe through your mouth, not your nose, or wet your knife when cutting the onions. Lots of different tricks. Chocolate chip cookies and party mix for tomorrow. Yum, I want some. You guys, so I finally frosted that banana bread blondie. Oh my God, you guys, it is amazing. Now I know why the lady who made the recipe is such a stickler and doesn't want you to repost it anywhere except to redirecting people to her specific page because it is to die for, you guys. It is amazing. Yes, good checks mix. Um, Mallory, did you ever make the cheesy ranch Chex mix that I made a couple of weeks ago around Christmas time? I made the cheesy ranch Chex mix. Super good. I don't know if you're wanting savory or if you're wanting sweet. Savory or sweet Chex mix. They look even dorky on. Yeah, I would assume that the, uh, the goggles that look super silly. All right, so while our peppers and our onions are cooking, we get to do the extra fun, repetitive part of, I'm gonna kind of scoot some of my cooking stuff over, try and keep my, my mess organized, you guys. We are going to take our rolls out of the package and we're gonna slice them in half because they don't come pre-sliced. All right, so. I picked the King's Hawaiian Rolls. I've made them with just the individual rolls, but I'm super excited for these so that those guys don't have to take a million little individual ones. They can take um, like mini subs of Philly cheesesteaks. So this is what I bought. Oh, and these are pre-sliced. Oh, that's awesome. So if you want to save yourself a headache, the Philly che or the King's Hawaiian mini sub rolls, they come pre-sliced where um, the individual ones like this, they don't. So that is so awesome, I'm so excited I don't have to cut all of these. So always be careful with these, they are super um, sticky on the bottom. Um, so don't go ripping away or they'll all separate out and you don't want that. So just really carefully kind of scoot under and lift them up on your own. No, I'm looking for plain, I guess. People use Worcestershire sauce and seasoning. My mom made it for me all the time and passed away last April. <sighs> Sad. Worcestershire sauce. Interesting. Hmm. I think there are probably a lot of good Chex Mix recipes out there. Um, so, I am going to keep doing this fun part. And then what we're going to do is once these are all sliced... We are going to, what's it say? Uh, dinner rolls in half, place the bottoms in your dish, and then we are gonna put mayonnaise on them. Yeah, Rebecca, these are so awesome. I've just learned this recipe a month ago, and I've probably made them five times since then. It is such an awesome recipe. Super easy, super delicious. I, like I said, I never really knew I liked Philly cheesesteaks until I made them without the peppers and onions. Because I'm silly like that and just a little kid. Um, I will definitely, I will after this. Muddy Buddies are so good for a sweet Chex Mix. Is that also like puppy chow? I think. So we are going to take these and it says two to three tablespoons per per pack of the of these rolls, you guys. So we're just gonna use a little bit of mayonnaise on the bottom of the roll, which will act as kind of like a butter. It will be a nice additive to these sandwiches. I am so happy these are pre-sliced, you guys. <laughs> you have no idea. I hated slicing these, the little rolls. But then you, you know, they separate and they fall apart. You know. I think the only ones that I'll have to slice are these. I got, they didn't have five packs of the the mini subs. 
So I just had to get a pack of the honey wheat rolls. They didn't even have regular rolls. And I was going to, I have honey, I have the regular rolls in my cupboard and I was going to use those. And I got a weird pack and instead of four, there's, there's only three on one side, which made me get a little bit. I have to go to the grocery store tomorrow afternoon anyway, so yeah, Ashley, I'll private message you. I like pre-sliced Hawaiian slider rolls, the same brand. If you buy a box check cereal, Sesame is always on the back. Yes, Chex Mix cereals, depending on which um, type of Chex Mix you get, whether it's the wheat or the rice or whatever, there are different recipes on the back of them, depending on what type of Chex you are purchasing. All right, so I'm so glad I didn't have to do that to all of these. Because I'm not very good at it. You guys see I, I ripped off part of the roll. All right. So what we're going to do, take our mayonnaise. I'm going to give these veggies a stir. But other than that, they should be ready and good to go. So I'm going to just cover them again. But I am going to turn the heat off of my skillet. Because we are basically ready to build these things. So we are gonna put some mayonnaise on them. Do, 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 do. Original Chex Mix is the way that my mom makes it. What are you doing, Kingston? Kingston? I don't know. Somebody's in my house making noises. Kingston. Me. Oh, it's my husband. Scary, I thought he was gone. But apparently not. All right, you guys. So we're just going to spread a little bit of mayonnaise onto these rolls. Just a little bit. Nothing crazy. If you don't like mayonnaise, which I don't, so I replaced it with a little bit of butter, and it was phenomenal. So if you don't like mayonnaise, you can definitely just use butter. Look at all those. Yeah. My husband's going to be sad that he doesn't get any. Yep, they are like puppy chow. I believe the packs can be browned in the oven, maybe. That's why they are kind of... Daisy Joe, so I did see a post on Facebook that said that. And I saw somebody say that it didn't work. But I don't know for sure. I do know that we are going to brown them and toast them in my oven. But we do have to put butter on top of them to get them nice and, um, nice and crispy and cooked. So I'm not sure if you can put them in the oven in their packs or not. I'd be kind of nervous about that, but you never know. The new things that you learn with the powers of social media. So we are just putting some mayonnaise on these. I'm trying to keep the tops of the rolls separated because we're gonna put all of our yummy toppings on and then we're gonna put the rolls back on. So you guys get those shares out there. So we hit 100 views. Let's get 120 so that we can donate more money to this Minot Men's Winter Refuge. The more viewers that we get in increments of 20, I will donate that amount in restaurant or um, Blue Apron bring gift cards for this um, men's refuge here in Minot. Just spread it around. Doesn't have to be perfect or beautiful because it's just going to melt into your bread. You did better than I did. One of the end of my rolls were cut slanted. Oh, mine was too. Daisy Joe, I want, I want the, his mom feeling hungry boys to make all of us something in mine. I'm always hungry. <laughs> yes, you guys. Um, I have a friend also. Um, shout out to Harry. He doesn't have Facebook, but he has been doing an awesome workout diet challenge for the last 36 days or something like that. And his diet ended today and he requested that I make him something this weekend so that he can really enjoy my food because I've been torturing him for the last 36 days, sending him snapchats of whatever I've cooked on my show and he has just been dying to eat it. So I do relate to my husband's friend come to the house and just peek in the door. What's she making today? Can I have some? So it's cute that... I, my food is becoming famous here in town. All right, you guys. I'm sorry for this painstaking process, but...
but we are cooking for 15 guys. So I've got to do this recipe times five. Otherwise we would have been done by now, but it is what it is and their food, hopefully they're gonna love it. So I am going to put this lid on. I'm gonna wash my hands again, get this mayonnaise off of them. All right, who is ready now? You guys are all so nice. Thank you for hanging out with me. We're making these Philly cheesesteak sliders today for the Minot Men's Winter Refuge. All right, so we've got our mayonnaise on here. Now we are going to spread, throw a knife on the floor. You guys, there's so much mess underneath my feet. So what we're gonna do is we're going to move this out of the way really fast. Good thing I wiped down all my counters today. I knew I was gonna be utilizing every square inch of my kitchen. So we're just gonna kind of sprinkle. All right, this is gonna be easier. Good thing I washed my hands because this is gonna be way easier if I just use my hands to sprinkle this steak on here like so. And you can use as little or as much as you want of the steak in your recipe. It calls for three-fourths of a pound, but if you want to throw a whole pound on there, go for it. It is delicious and so hearty, you guys. I love this recipe so much. So yummy, warm, and delicious. All right, so I'm just going to keep spreading this and just cross my fingers and hope that I have enough Philly meat to complete all five of my Philly cheese dates that I have. And just remember, you are gonna be putting onions and peppers on these, so save some room. For those to fit on there, you don't want to be taking a bite of your sandwich and having everything fall off. Not a huge deal if that happens, but they will be messy enough on their own. Oh. All right, you guys, sadly, I did not, I feel like, where are my wheat ones? You can't even tell where they are. All right, so I miscalculated, so we're only gonna be able to do four of these Philly cheese steaks. I don't have enough meat for this last one. I was hoping I could tell which ones were the wheat ones, but I can't from the underside. So I'm actually gonna take this, you guys, and take all the meat off the wheat ones and just put it on this sub one that I have left. So multiplying this recipe like I did, I can only make four instead of five of these fillies. I wasn't sure with that prepackaged meat how much it would work out to be. So I tried, I tried. I'm multiplying my mac and cheese by four, so we'll just follow suit with four. Get this meat spread on here, and then we are going to cover these with onion and pepper. All right, I'm gonna move this up and wash my hands again. I don't know, nope, you guys can't see me. I never know if you guys can see me or not. So, we've got our Philly meat on there. Move this out of the way. There we go. Let's see what I missed. Yep, I'm here in my night. Jill, North Dakota. I live in North Dakota. I know. I'm sad that I didn't have enough meat, you guys. I did order more meat through the Schwann's van, but our Schwann's van actually got an awesome job opportunity somewhere else, and so... We are going to be without our Schwann's man for um, a couple of weeks, which is sad, but I'm excited for him to have another job opportunity. All right. Now we are going to take, I'm going to take a slotted spoon, if I can find it in my drawer. Because these peppers did leave, um, they did release a lot of extra juice in them. So I'm gonna take a slotted spoon and I'm just gonna kind of spread these around. They are hot, so I'm trying to be careful. They were enclosed in my skillet. 
So get those all spread on there. Didn't know you were live. I'm catching up on the videos. Oh, ran out of meat. Okay, I'm just making sure I'm not missing out on these, you guys. Let's get those shares out there, you guys. Let's get those shares out there. Let's hit 120 and donate some more stuff to this Minot Men's Refuge. Super awesome organization here in Minot for the Minot and surrounding areas for some of those people that have been displaced during the winter months. It cannot be easy. All right, got our peppers and our onions. And like I said, if you don't like peppers or onions, this is still a phenomenal meal without them. I, they add a lot of good smell and color, but if you don't like them, you are like me, and you can skip them all together. There we go. Get some more on here. Kind of spread this meat out better. Just drip all of that onion and pepper juice into the pan. There we go. Got a little bit of extra peppers and onions. Hot. Don't know why I keep doing that to my hand instead of using the spoon. All right, onions and peppers are on there. I'm gonna move my skillet out of the way. Next, so when I make mine, because I don't use the onions or the peppers, I, thank you for sharing, Anna. Um, when I make mine, because I don't have onions and peppers, I do bread, butter, instead of mayonnaise. Then I do a slice of cheese, meat, slice of cheese, and then the bun. So that is the way I do my Philly cheese steaks. Um, Talon, I could too, and that's why I was hoping I had five because then it would allow um, each guy to have basically a full Philly. One, two, three, four, but we have 12. So, and I know they say they don't always have 15 guys, but I would think probably on the weekend that it's more likely than not that they would have more guys. Um, the recipe calls for provolone, but I use a mixture of provolone and American because I just really love, love, love how American melts over this Philly cheesesteak in the oven. You are watching the video of my mozzarella meatballs. Those turned out really well, and I ended up making a couple days after that, making a full pan of them for my hairdresser, and she loved them too. She took half of them home and left half of them at work for herself for the next day. So those mozzarella meatballs are super good. Um, I did have somebody pin me in a recipe, actually, um, that you could make those mozzarella meatballs in the crock pot. So that was interesting, I thought and maybe a time saver um, if you don't want to cook them in your oven or don't want to heat your house up or don't have an oven, whatever they may be, right? So we're just getting these cheese slices on here. You guys can use whatever cheese you like, pepper jack, American, provolone, cheese whiz, whatever you guys like on your Philly cheese steaks. Um, it's definitely just dealer's choice on this stuff, you guys. So I'm just going to kind of switch it up. What do you need? Husband's wandering around lost. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Drive safe. Yep. All right, you guys. Put these last pieces on here. Doggies outside. Last couple of slices. Someone is here. Ooh, guys, I think it's the Schwann's man. Oh, so I can cook up some extra meat and finish these sandwiches once we get off of the line. I bet I could do it. Yeah, it's four o'clock. I could definitely get it done by six. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so now we have all of our cheese on here. I'm hoping so, Carol. I am hoping so. Do you want man's here? Did you need anything else? Or? Um, no, I think we're good. Just that Philly meat. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so we've got our cheese on here. Now we are going to yeah. return the rolls to the top of our Phillies. 
You guys, I'm so excited. Our Schwanz man actually came. I am so excited. So excited. I'm glad I didn't clean that pan up yet. We can just throw some more Philly meat in there. All right, so our buns are back on here. I have my nine million cheese packet over here. I did use all of our provolone. Okay, now we are gonna take butter and melt it in a bowl, add some garlic powder and brush it to the top and then we're gonna wrap them up with tin foil and stick them in the oven to um, for 10 minutes at 350 and they get nice and warm and ooey gooey and then we take the tin foil off and then the tops get nice and crunchy and super delicious. So I'm gonna do about five tablespoons of butter Throw it in the microwave just for 30 seconds or so. And then we're gonna add our garlic powder in. We're gonna brush these babies. And then they're gonna be ready for the oven. And then we are gonna make our mac and cheese. So the mac and cheese is gonna be absolutely delicious. I am multiplying our mac and cheese recipe by four. Um, I can, I can and I will post the picture and the recipe for the mac and cheese when I get off. For whatever reason, it doesn't let you post a picture and a video together on Facebook. Um, and if you're wanting it now, you can go to my website, um, go to the recipes and it's inside dishes and go to the mac and cheese, which will be on the second page. And it has my mac and cheese recipe. You guys can use whatever um, cheese you want for my mac and cheese recipe, but I do use Velveeta and it is so good. It reminds me of childhood. My aunt Linda used to make it for me all the time and it is my favorite. So we need, it calls for a fourth a teaspoon of garlic powder. So I'm multiplying this by four. So I did a teaspoon of garlic powder and you just kind of stir it up with your, um, What's this thing called? Your uh, <laughs> paintbrush? I don't know. I can't think of the name of it. It was seriously perfect timing, you guys. I am so excited. So I'm just going to brush this right on the top of it. If you don't like garlic powder, just do a nice, generous coating of butter before you put it in the oven, and it makes it nice, brown, and crispy. Absolutely perfect. Um, it reminds me of a lot of um, Olive Garden's breadsticks with this butter and garlic powder brushed on top. It's like an Olive Garden breadstick and a Philly cheesesteak. Absolutely delicious, you guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Normally I would throw these in the oven, but because I'm going to make that other set of sandwiches... I am going to wait to throw them in the oven until like half an hour before I'm going to leave to take them to town so that they're nice and piping hot for the guys at 6 o'clock. So my oven is preheated 350. I'm going to cover these with tin foil so that nothing happens to them and then we will get moving pastry brush. Thank you, Rose. And then we are going to get going on our mac and cheese. That did not want to work. All right. Get this covered. Nothing fancy, you guys. Just add one sheet of tin foil over the top so that your um, buns don't get too toasted right away because you want to warm the sandwich up first. Get that butter and that um, cheese melted and then take the top off to let that bun get toasted. So remember, warm your sandwiches first with the tin foil on and then toast your buns after that. Um, Christy, yes, a baster, a pastry brush, butter brush, whatever you wanna call it. I call it a painting brush. It's a brush of some kind too. Thank you, yeah, just leave them on the counter. Thank you. My husband, I'm sure, is like, what in the world? I want a Philly pizza. <laughs> All right, get these covered, and then we are ready to start on our mac and cheese. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take you guys for a little ride over to the other side of the kitchen. You guys know I always like putting you over here while I'm working on my stove. 
All right. Who is ready for some mac and cheese? I am going to turn my water on for my pasta. You made sliders for my daughters. You did! I wonder, Patty, if you ever came up with what you are going to make for them. What kind of sliders did you make? Get those shares out there, you guys. Let's hit 120 so that we can donate $120 to this Minot Men's Winter Refuge. Let's do it, you guys. Let's get those vote or let's get those shares out there, you guys. I'm going to pick my knife up off the ground so that my dog quits chewing it. All right, I'm going to wash my hands and then we're going to get started on this super delicious, yummy. Oh, are you taking Gage? Yes. Oh, sad day. He takes my dog sometimes when he travels, so he is taking the pup pup with him. All right, so I have just a little bit of salt in my pan for my pasta. Ham and cheese and also Philly cheese sticks. Ham and cheese would be really good, you guys. Really good. So I pre-measured out, so I'm multiplying my recipe by four. So a cup and two-thirds times four is what we've got going on right here. I'm going to kind of move that so it doesn't get wrecked. And now we are going to, here it is, get going. So we're going to start off, you guys, I've never made mac and cheese, my mac and cheese to this magnitude. So bear with me. I uh, went through and I multiplied everything by four and wrote it down for myself so that I wasn't having to do the conversions on camera with you guys. So what we're going to start first, you have your pot of boiling water for your pasta. Um, I recommend using the large elbow noodles, large so that with that cheese can really soak into the um, elbow of the noodle and get all that cheese and goodness in there. So large elbow macaroni, you guys. You can't say share anymore against Facebook rules. Patsy, really? I have never, ever, ever heard that. Mallory, so it's a cup and two thirds times four. So it was six, what, six and a half cups? Six and two thirds cups. Um, yeah, we'll see. Because I feel like when I make it, it seems like a lot. And I always I always over pour. So I'm going to do a little bit of extra cheese and a little bit of extra noodles. So we'll see. I'm thinking with the Philly cheese sticks and the mac and cheese, I'm hoping it's going to be enough. Patsy, that's interesting. If you could um, somehow tag me or forward that to me. Um, I do get emails because I have a page on Facebook. I do get emails regarding stuff like that and I haven't received anything. So let me know. Obviously, I don't want to be against Facebook rules. Um, my account is in the positive right now and I haven't broken any rules. So I'm hoping I think they say sprinkle for share. I think people just do that because it's fun. I don't think it's against Facebook rules, but I could be wrong. So I will look into it when we are done today. So you guys, we are using a lot of butter today. We are using a cup of butter and a cup of flour to start our roux for our mac and cheese. So you are going to melt this butter and then we are gonna add our flour to it. And this part is super important with this mac and cheese because this um, creates your roux. This is your, you guys see this right now? My husband must have let her out of her cage. All right. <clears throat> Sorry guys, I don't ever have my cats on the counter, but my husband must have gone into his bathroom letting the cats out. So did not expect that to happen. Thank gosh those sandwiches were all wrapped up. Um. That orange chicken lacy was so good. So we, this is really important for your roux. It's the thickening agent for your mac and cheese. Um, and it holds all of the yummy seasonings that we are going to add. Um, another secret ingredient to our mac and cheese, um, I know Panera uses it as well, is the ground mustard in my mac and cheese. I hate mustard. Hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. But I love it in my mac and cheese. Um, Tracy, that's what I'm worried about. I'm not sure yet because I only have two big pans and we're going to be using one for the cheese and one for the noodles. And um, the only other big pan I have is like big, big, big for like crab legs. So I missed the beginning. Can you please show me the box of steak you used? Of course. This is what I use. It's through Schwann's, but they also have it at grocery stores as well. Um, they come in like they have black on the back of them and they're clear on the front side and they're rectangular in shape and they'll say Philly cheesesteak or Reuben or chicken on the front of them. Super awesome. Ready to, ready to cook meat. What I like about it is it's not already cooked so it's not going to get 
you know, overcooked and gummy and chewy. Um, you can actually cook that to a medium, medium well if you wanted to, which I really, really like. They have sh a share word because fake book filters and I think it's a spam and will block people. That makes more sense. Is the orange chicken and fried rice recipe on your website? Yes, Jill. Oh, no, not yet. I can put it on there tonight if you want me to. Um, but as of right now, my orange chicken recipe is just on my Facebook. Um, but I can definitely get it onto the website tonight. I can do that. So we have our cup of butter melted. Now we're going to do our cup of our flour, which is super, super important, you guys, to make sure that you have your butter and your flour and you let it cook together before you do anything else with your recipe. So your cup of flour which I'm multiplying this recipe by four, you guys, which I've never done before, so I will let you guys know if it works. Um, my aunt used to double it by two, so I know that you can do it. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that this is nice and smooth, your butter and your flour are mixed in and smooth together. Right now I have some lumps, so what I'm just gonna do is just kinda mix it around. You don't have to get crazy, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort. Um, Jill, yes. So what I try to do is I get the recipes on my website every Sunday is my goal. Um, any recipes that I have done for the week by Sunday. So no, it's not rushing me. It's just, it's just a day so I can get it done tonight since my husband will be gone anyway. Um, I can focus on that. All right. So nice and smooth flour and butter, your roux together. Um, you want your temperature on your stove nice and low. You don't want to burn this mixture. You don't want to burn your butter and your flour together. You just want it nice and smooth consistency. And then you are going to proceed to um, mix in your other ingredients. So we are going to do four teaspoons. I thought I had a teaspoon out, but I don't see it. So we want four teaspoons of minced onion. Okay, minced onion, four teaspoons. You guys, I lost count. I think this is four, it might be five. I don't know. I lost count showing you guys my onions. So what I kind of do is I add one ingredient in at a time and then just give it a nice stir so that your flour or your butter doesn't burn while you're trying to add these other ingredients in. Mallory, I um, actually have no plans for tomorrow. So four teaspoons of minced onion, four teaspoons of salt. You guys know how I feel about salt, so I'm actually only going to do one teaspoon because that's a lot of salt. Four teaspoons would be kind of crazy. Um, mix our salt in. Then we need four teaspoons of our ground mustard. Yes, what is everybody doing for the Super Bowl tomorrow? Um, it's going to be fun and exciting. I don't have any plans because my kiddos are still really little um, and my husband's going to be gone. So no big plans here. My mother-in-law is in town, so we'll probably just hang out with her and not watch football. It's kind of sacrilegious, I know, but hard when you got little ones. All right, so four teaspoons of our mustard. Give it a nice stir. My, um, <clears throat> my water is almost ready for my pasta to go in. And I'm just going to need to cook that about 10 minutes, the pasta, for it to be done. So we've got our mustard and then half a teaspoon of pepper. You guys know I love my pepper. Yes, Joe, cheese is salty enough. I don't ever feel like you really need to add salt in. Hello. Hi, honey. Okay, you got the charger? Uh, yep. I just, I just got the headphones. Okay, do you want mine or do you want the charger? I want yours. Okay. Here we go. So we've got our mustard and our pepper and our minced garlic, our minced onion, sorry, our salt. Then, go ahead. And then we are gonna take our milk and we're gonna do eight cups of milk, you guys. Eight big old cups of milk. 
would be two quarts of milk. That's fine, baby. Just put it on the counter somewhere. All right, eight cups of milk. And what you want to do is you want to add this milk in nice and slow so that it can come up to the same temperature as the flour and thicken. And you'll know you're doing it right. So what you do is you're on low right now, so you're going to add a little bit of milk in. Yes, baby. A little bit of milk in. We're going to stir it around, and you will notice that your milk will become a nice, thick mixture along with your roux. So you just want to kind of add it a little bit at a time. Yeah, I probably overwhelmed this pot, but we will see how well. Yes, please see. I can't really see. Ten minutes. Okay, baby. All right, so, and then what you want to do is you want to turn your temperature up as you start to add your milk back in so that it can keep up with the cold temperature of the milk. Hello, Jenny. Just off of work, how was your day at work today? We are making Philly cheesesteaks and mac and cheese. Yeah, I probably overwhelmed it with the pasta, you guys. But no big deal. If we gotta cook it a little bit longer, we gotta cook it a little bit longer. So what you want, you guys see how my milk is getting thick along with the roux. You don't wanna overwhelm it. You wanna do it a little bit at a time. Let that mixture come to temperature a little bit at a time. Just turn the heat up a little bit to keep up with the milk that you're adding in. A little bit at a time. Oh, oh, turn it down. Put your headphones in. No, it doesn't work. I can't find the hole. Oh, <laughs> come here. I don't want to. I don't want that sound going on. Sorry. Not good. No, it's kind of good, but it should still be good, buddy. It's just chicken. He's sitting at the kitchen table eating his popcorn chicken. All right, so our pasta is back up. Give it a nice stir so that your pasta isn't sticking together in big clumps. Stir it around, get those noodles moving. Let them rotate around and get a nice even cook. Like the guy said, I told you I'm using the big elbows to get that cheese in those elbows. So we're going to stir this around, make sure we don't have any lumps or chunks in here. You will have little BB chunks from your minced onion, but that's it. So just a little bit at a time. I'm doing eight cups of milk, you guys. This is so much milk. There we go. So that was four cups I've done already. So eight cups, I want to say is half a gallon, just about half of a gallon. I'm using 2% milk. You can use whole milk. It will be a very, very rich mac and cheese if you use whole milk. Yes, Lynn, some good comfort food. That's what I was going for. So I'm going to turn my temperature up from medium to high, you guys, now to keep up with this mixture. And then what we're going to do is I use Velveeta cheese. So you're going to kind of slice that up into chunks, smaller chunks. You don't want to overwhelm the um, mixture by putting just a big block of cheese in there so you want to dice it up a little bit so that it melts faster than if you were to just throw a big old block in there and we're going to be using two pounds of cheese you guys which is a full Velveeta block and I'm going to do a little bit extra in there because I always do um, because I did do a little bit extra noodles yeah, you guys I pour, <laughs> I need more water in there. So I'm gonna turn my sink on and let it get hot, hot, hot so I don't cool it down when I add more water to my pasta. I didn't want to have too much water that my pasta would cause it to overflow, but I just didn't put enough water. So we have our Philly cheesesteaks, you guys. 620, or, oh, it's like, it's 620, what? Um, I think it's a little after four. We're going to just keep adding this little by little, it's nice and slow, so that the whole mixture gets up to temperature and you don't cool it down right away. 
Uh -huh, Carrie, thank you. It is a struggle sometimes, but we get it done because, hey, we all have to eat. So, might as well have fun while I'm cooking because I'm going to have to do it no matter what. All right, you guys, keep this pasta stirring since I am so low on water. I'm going to wait for my sink to get hot so I can add some more water into there, you guys. Let's get those shares out, you guys. Let's hit that 120 again and get that more money to donate to these guys for their meals. Um, I probably should have figured out how much it costs to feed these guys, but I um, didn't pay attention. But it really wasn't too ridiculous. That Philly cheesesteak meat isn't bad at all. Um, it's a lot cheaper than using the ribeye. Um, those Hawaiian sweet rolls, um, I think I were on sale when I got them at the store. I mean, this combination of stuff really is pretty inexpensive, which is good. So our last bit of milk, and then we're just going to start adding our chunks of cheese. My nose is still stuffy from those onions, you guys. All right. Sorry, I'm out of camera. I'm just filling this up with some water so that my pasta isn't struggling in the pan anymore. Because your pasta will absorb water and it will burn off while it's cooking. And I messed up and I didn't add enough water to start with. These elbows are going to get nice and big and plump. So we're going to... I had this water so that it is not struggling for space anymore. Keep, make sure you keep an eye on this mixture so it doesn't burn to the bottom at all. Once your milk and your flour and everything is mixed together, you can turn your temperature back down because it doesn't take too much to melt that Velveeta. So, we're going to turn this back down from high to low. It's got a nice even temperature now. Get this nice and mixed up. Now, I'm just going to start chunking off bits of cheese. <laughs> Rose, um, so to feed these 15 guys, I went with like about seven cups of pasta, which came out to be two boxes of the large elbow macaroni. So I used two boxes of large elbow macaroni for this recipe. And then we're just gonna use this Velveeta cheese and we're just gonna chunk it off in pieces like this and just throw it in a little at a time, just kind of cutting as you go. Just little pieces, you can go even smaller than that if you want to, and quarter it. I've got two pounds of cheese to cut up, so I'm just gonna go. Um, Linda, so normally, with this pasta recipe, you will bake it. Um, I don't bake it because I love, love, love how ooey and gooey the cheese is. But if you are going to bake it, you're just going to cook your large elbow macaroni for 10 to 12 minutes and then put it in the oven. Um, there are also oven ready macaronis that you can use um, that basically you don't have to boil it first before you put it in the oven. So it's kind of um, whatever you prefer. But I would say um, a lot of the baking is just to um, really thicken up that cheese and get it baked in. So if you want it nice and runny and juicy like I do, which I love, um, then you don't have to bake it. You don't, um, you're not missing out on anything if you don't bake it. And then you do cook your pasta all the way. Kind of just depends. This is kind of... Um, Kind of a recipe that I think you will eventually just kind of develop into your own and you'll do your own little tricks of the trade with it. Um, but it will always turn out super good, you guys. So that was two pounds of Alvita cheese. I'm gonna get it, give it a nice stir and then I might add some more in there. Almost missed it, just got off work, but you're here, Franny. Hello, hello, so if you missed it, I am cooking right now for the Minot Men's Winter Refuge. So I'm cooking for 15 guys. I made Philly cheesesteak sliders, which are behind me in those pans. We still have to throw those in the oven for 20 minutes, 10 with the tinfoil on and 10 with the tinfoil off to get that cheese nice and melty, those sandwiches nice and hot. And then I am also making macaroni and cheese. So I uh, multiplied my macaroni and cheese recipe by four hoping that I will make enough for them and then I will throw it into this 
I'll throw it into this dish and then I'll throw it in the oven and give it a little bit of a bake and then we will take it to the My Not Men's Winter Refuge. So hello doodles, how are you? Um, and we did super awesome today. We got those shares out there right at the beginning of my show. You guys have been awesome for hanging out with me through the length of this because we are basically doing two full meals. Um, we hit um, about 105 viewers and today I'm not going to do a giveaway but what I am going to do is I am going to donate $100 to the Minot Men's Winter Refuge for their food drive program. Um, they use Blue Apron or food restaurant um, gift cards or grocery store gift cards so I'm going to give them probably a grocery store gift card in the amount of $100 because we hit 100 viewers. Um, so if we hit 120 you guys I will donate $120. I do mine like that, then bake it. Velveeta sharp and mozzarella. Franny, so good, you guys. I don't think there's ever been a macaroni that I have met that I haven't liked. I love macaroni and cheese. And so does um, my two-year-old son, Grayson. La, la, loves his mac and cheese. He is my kid at heart through and through. So our macaroni is done. I did overwhelm my pan, you guys, but I didn't know what else to do because I only have two big pans and I had to use both of them. I am going to throw in some extra cheese, you guys, because you really, just really can't go wrong. But I also um, threw in a little bit of extra noodles. I didn't do the six and two thirds. I did probably a little over seven. So I'm just going to throw in a couple more pieces of cheese into here and then... We are good to go. Your mac and cheese is basically done at this point. Um, on a good day, I can make this mac and cheese faster than I can make a box of the Kraft mac and cheese. So, Sheila, you're so sweet, you guys. Um, thank you. I actually just got introduced to this program recently. So, this is my first time ever working with them or donating to them. So, I'm hoping that you guys, if you um, have the means, and of course if you don't, I understand, but if you have the means to donate where you can to this this um, program, and um, if you are in the Minot area and you love cooking too, to cook for them, they've got some days open on their meal train for people to provide some meals for them. So, Amy, <laughs> I don't think I'd ever do my mac and cheese on the Instant Pot just because I don't know how to do this recipe in the Instapot, and I don't think I could ever do... Good afternoon, Riley. How's it going? <laughs> don't talk to her right now. I don't think I could do the recipe in the Instapot, and I don't think I'll ever do a recipe but this one for my mac and cheese. I don't know why. Yeah. It just, I'm hooked. Yeah, Sherry, I have had that, like, at a restaurant before, but the flavor was good. The cheese was really good. Please stop, Kingston. Thank you. But the noodles were, um, yeah, just hot, rock hard, and it was, it was kind of sad. But the flavor was good. The cheese was good from the restaurant. But I love, love, love mac and cheese, you guys. All right. I'm going to take my strainer, and I'm just going to throw my pasta and strain it out in my sink. Hopefully I don't burn myself. The burner is a little too big for this pot, so it's kind of heat, been heating up these handles. You're going to miss your grandma. It's his mom, buddy. Okay. Lots of noodles. So I'm not going to put this back on the burner. I'm just going to set this pot on a pot holder over here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these pots to add the cheese and the macaroni to each other and mix it up nice and good. And then I'm going to put it in that, that big pan to bake it. And then it is all set to go. How does that sound? Yes, the puppies are over here hanging out. So our cheese is nice and melted, you guys. It smells delicious. I might have to snag a bowl before I give the rest to the guys because... I think it would just be blasphemy if I didn't eat this after making it. <laughs> I don't think I've ever made it and not had a bowl of it. Make sure it's not poisonous, right guys? So I think I just have one more cheese chunk in here that needs to melt. My heat is basically off at this point. You don't need much heat at all to melt this cheese. All right, you guys. Let's see, maybe I should just add them into here. This is where my noodles were before. 
I just want somewhere that's going to be easy to stir the pasta in, and I worry if I get it in that big pan, it'll be hard to mix the noodles into the cheese. Bill, yes, my Philly cheese sticks are done in the background, and now we have our mac and cheese. Our yummy, yummy, yummy mac and cheese. So, I did, yeah, I might have to just use that big... Sandy yep. I am going to have to just use that big pan. This is a lot of mac and cheese. I definitely underestimated how big these noodles are, you guys. So awesome. So, so awesome. So, let's do this. Let's move these fillies over again. I'm going to move you guys back over there. Sorry for the switcheroo. But we are basically done, you guys. I just have to put, um, I'm just going to cook a couple more of those Philly meat packs to make a couple more of the sliders and then uh, bake them for 20 minutes and bake the mac and cheese for maybe 10 to 15 and then I'm going to take it all and deliver it to the Minot Men's Winter Refuge. So we are just going to add our noodles into this pan. I am going to wipe it out. There are a couple of breadcrumbs in it. Wipe it out of all the dusties. Pour our noodles in. Woo! Give myself a steam facial. Here we go. Look at that, you guys. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Here we go. That's not good. All right. <laughs> There were a couple of cheese chunks in there. It looks like that weren't completely melted, but they will melt once I put this in the oven. You guys, yum, oh, for sure. Yummy, 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 yummy. Super delicious, you guys. Let's get that cheese chunk kind of mixed in here. Yum. This has to be enough mac and cheese, right guys? I don't know. I could eat this whole thing probably, but in like, it'd probably take me a couple days. It would only take my family like two meals to eat all of this. So hopefully this is enough for the guys at the Winter Refuge. Because this is a big old pan and it is full. All right, you guys. So thank you for hanging out with me. I will post a picture of um, the Philly cheesesteaks and the mac and cheese when I deliver it, hopefully. Um, like I said, so 20 minutes in the oven with the tin foil on. Halfway through, take the tin foil off of the Philly cheesesteaks and let those buns get nice and toasty. Then pull them out and you can cover them back up and keep them warm until serving time. Mac and cheese, just throw it into your oven. Um, I think my, my aunt's recipe says like 30 to 35 minutes. Totally up to you how long you keep it in there. Just keep an eye on it. And um, I love mine soupy like this. So when I make it for the family, I don't bake it. But I'm going to bake it for these guys so it's not too big of a soupy mess. Um, but you definitely just tweet your own. We hit 105 live views today while I was cooking that stuck and hung out with me for a couple um, for a couple of steps of the recipe. So I'm going to donate $100 to the Minot Men's Winter Refuge. If you guys feel so inclined, I did include the link in the description of this video. So you guys can take a look at it, decide if you want to donate or give anything to the cause. Um, yes, liquid gold and macaroni. So I am going to just finish off these recipes. And I will hopefully tonight have time to sit down, pick out a recipe for Monday, pick out two recipes for Thursday, um, and maybe I will come on tomorrow and we can make something dessert-wise. But we'll see how it all goes. Oh, Tracy, thank you for the heads up because I've never used one of these before. So stick a more sturdy pan in the bottom so it doesn't collapse. I appreciate that. It would be sad if this ended up on the floor. So. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Have an awesome rest of your night, and I will post all of the pictures and the details shortly. Bye.